What's up everyone? Little Bad here with another video and today I'm going to be doing the gear guide for grinding at the end game of Stranger of Paradise. I've been receiving a lot of different comments uh, under my videos about my gear and where I'm acquired it and sets and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down the best way that I can in this short video. So as you can see when you're going through a mission or side mission you can bring up your main item drops and look through and this will give you a basic layout of what the gear is going to look like from there and also the different weapons that will be from that area because certain weapons do have special abilities now a lot of these weapons as you're going to see um as you go throughout the game they have the exact same ability exact same stats they're just named differently and they have like a little bit of a color variation and other than that there's really no big difference um, as far as your armor and stuff is concerned um, going through the different missions you're morally so looking at like different sets for the appearance that you want except for the Terra area and also the triple question mark area right here for the abyss mail the abyss mail is the only armor that I'm aware of so far in this game that has a very special ability on it that cannot be replicated through the smithy. Uh, you actually have to have the abyss drop to get it and that's the near death bonus uh, which is a great bonus for the dark knight uh, if you're running the 400% affinity uh, bonus on the DK you get all the near death buffs at all time which means that if you can sub your, D, uh, your dark knight to 400 on a melee job and throw on the abyss gear uh, that near death damage dealt the percentage is so high um, you'll be doing like 25% more damage compared uh, with that gear compared to others uh, okay so one of the first things I'm going to go through here is show you basically how I grinded a lot of the gear early um, with for all the different jobs with relatively pretty good ease so as you can see once you get in chaos mode you open up all the different levels and of course you're gonna need the anima crystals to open them so you can start off I would say you know at the lowest level once you first hit your chaos maybe go a couple levels up you know break it up to 150 instead of 130 when you're starting and um, you know that'll give you a little bit of range because you're like yeah I get one shot at all this all that I, basically actually I would I take that back I would say starting off the highest number you can afford on the chaos shrine with your animal crystals go ahead and go for the highest level um, because you can really bypass a lot of the enemies beginning besides the one uh, where you got the goblin that gets spewed out of the wall but it's only just him and you destroy that wall piece you can turn on invisible whatever you need to use uh, just to get that wall down and get to this cube where I'm at now so as you can see what I'm doing is I'm going through I selected two random jobs pugilist to monk because i want to start collecting crests and now i'm starting to stack nothing but thief on that job i don't care about any of the other affinities all i care about is getting that 400 percent thief affinity now i'm going to go under here i'm going to stack up my luck as you can tell and my drop rate i'm going to max those out um this is really good let's say that like if you don't care for playing for with any of the break classes duelist or monk or pugilist like i'm on now or the caster or melee itself um all you gotta really do for this method is you just want to stack thief to 400 percent no matter the job that you're on because we're going to be doing the bomb chaining method and with this method uh your physical attack your magic tech it doesn't matter um because all you're doing is using your soul shield to catch the fire from these bombs right here and then you are literally just going to send it back their way they'll self-destruct and you'll get the experience you'll get crest and now that you are in chaos mode as you see boom there's one legendary already starting off um it's just really easy um just in case like i said if there's a class that you really don't feel comfortable with or if you had a you know a lot of problems controlling it or trying to learn it and you just want to get the gear or get the levels for it without actually playing it or wasting your shards uh, this is a really good method now of course with this farming method that I'm showing you here um, there's a couple of things uh, one I've got it where the only gear I'm picking up 
it has to be legendary or higher for me at this point because of the amount of farming I have done. But what I will say is, as you are going from the 130 to 300 chaos mode, um, as so many levels go, like a 20 or 30 level jump, I would say just pick up all gear. It doesn't matter if it's grays, greens, yellows. Uh, like, until you get to the high 290 mark, I wouldn't even really worry about stacking artifacts or looking for only legendaries or only artifacts uh, because as you keep getting those anima crystals and opened up more and more um, it just means that the gear is going to keep getting upgraded it's going to have better overall stats um, the higher numbers which means that you you know taking less damage less likely to break as you increase and that's what i would do i would basically go through um, collect enough crystals do about you know a good 30 level jump uh, sometimes 50 honestly because really with the chaos shrine it's as much anima crystal as you can afford all the way to 300 uh, doing this method and then boom you start farming level 290 to 300 gear um, with no problem whatsoever and like I said you're also getting a bunch of crests which is really good uh, for the multiple enemies to get crests for the affinities now you could also do the bosses here. The four fiends are really good also uh, for the side missions where you can just select them instead of running the whole dungeon because everything that's in the dungeon is basically present in the, the boss fight itself. So unless you're going for the chest and everything like that or for the anima crystals uh, farms, really just going straight to bosses, going in there, taking them out. We'll get you everything that you need. So that pretty much covers my farming method in the areas that I use. As you can see, the Chaos Shrine and the Triple Question Mark for the Crest Farming with all the different enemies, the Bomb Chains and the 51 Enemy Rush, uh, the Terra, and also the Triple Question Mark again for the Boss Rushes for the Abyss Gear, and then the Four Fiends at the different Shrines of their locations for the individual Boss Farming. So... Yeah, please uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you got any more questions, I try to cover everything the best that I could or think off the top of my head. So please leave a like and a comment uh, or subscribe and let me know what you think. So this is a little bad out. Catch you later.